Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm covering the weekly Mix Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Furla Julia, or the Julia Gulia, as I like to refer to it, in the Oxblood. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workouts, let's go to work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Versatility. Absolutely love your screen name. Uh, what is the handbag you paid the most for that you regret? Mine is the Fendi 3 Jour. It's beautiful but oddly shaped and the resale value is horrible. Um, all right, so I've said it before and I know some people think that it's such a cop out but I truly feel this way. Um, I actually don't regret a single solitary purchase I have ever made, whether it was a good one or whether it was a bad one. I'm not saying that it was enjoyable to lose money. I'm not saying it was enjoyable to go through the process of dealing with a handbag that didn't work out or when I was so excited about a silhouette and I was, I mean, I was sure that it was going to work out for me, that kind of disappointment that I got, that wasn't fun either. I'm not saying that at all. But the reason why I don't regret it is because it's really helped me pinpoint what it is that ends up working out for my lifestyle at this very moment. Had it not been for that that silhouette, had it not been for that color, had it not been for that type of material, I would end up having a shelf of bags that I would never use. I honestly think that I might, I might end up sticking to like one or two and the rest of them would end up sitting there for years, months at a time, you know? So that's why I said it's really helped me to pinpoint, it's really helped me to be a little bit more selective on what it is that I add to my collection and, um, I don't know, I just, it's like I said before, it wasn't the most pleasant experience to go through, but I don't regret it because in the end, um, now I have a collection that I thoroughly enjoy, and while I still have some issues with <laughs> with a few, um, for the most part, I still enjoy them, and I'm able to rotate them without necessarily worrying that they're gonna sit there for years at a time or anything like that. So we have a little bit more eye candy. Instead of showing you guys the bag that I paid the most for that I regret, I thought that I would share the bag that's the most expensive in terms of cost per wear. So this bag, I do think that it's beautiful. I have a love-hate relationship. A lot of you already know what it is. If you've been watching my channel for a while, I've talked you guys' ear off about it. Um, and I'm very happy that I found a new way to carry it, so I do wear it a lot more often than ever before. Uh, but the one that I end up benching the most in comparison to any of the other handbags that I have is the Chanel Le Boy bag in the new medium size. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful bag. I love how edgy it is. I think it's very chic. I love the double stitching. Uh, but for me, it's not the most user friendly whenever I go to use it. So oftentimes I will um, I will end up leaving it on the shelf and I'll go for something else, you know. But like I said before, I'm really happy that I found a new way to carry it because um, it ends up working a little bit better, you know. But I still have that love-hate relationship. Uh, but I think that this is an awesome, awesome question. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. Do you also feel the same way that I do that uh, you don't regret any purchases because it helps you pinpoint what it is that you add to your collection now or are there bags in your within your collection that you do regret whatever the case may be let us know in the comment section down below a fantastic question hopefully i was able to answer it next question from little ambivert hopefully i said that correctly with respect to health and weight loss have you ever dealt with weight loss saboteurs for instance i have family members and friends who know i am 5000 percent serious about getting my health in check which has obviously led to a substantial weight loss for me, but they are persistent in their attempts to lead me astray. This comes in the form of the seemingly harmless but incessant, please have some insert really excessive unhealthy food, I bought this for all of us, or it's just one piece, it won't kill you. I'm faced with these questions from the same people over and over again, even though they know the answer is no. I also happen to know for a fact that they are struggling with their own weight loss journeys and have seen my progress since the beginning of mine. I 100% know exactly, exactly where you're coming from. And you're right, it's so incredibly frustrating. Um, with me, it was actually uh, a very close family member. And this same family member would often make comments about the way that I used to look. Um, they would say, oh my gosh, you have this. Oh my gosh, you have that. Constantly make fun of me. And once I started to lose weight, then they started to comment on that aspect of it. And um, whenever we would get together for family gatherings, you know, I would say, you know what, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to eat that if someone offered me something. And they made me feel like I was the a-hole because I wasn't eating that food. They would sit there and say, oh my gosh, you're so dramatic. You're so dramatic. It's just one piece. You're, you're making such a big deal. And all these things in front of people and... For a minute, I would be like, oh my gosh, I, I am the a-hole. I am the a-hole. You're right. It's just one little thing. It's just one little thing. And then I'd snap out of it. Because the way that I felt, it was like, okay, consider the source. 
consider the source that's telling you that. It was at a holiday and they were telling me to eat this and eat that and I was I was getting so frustrated by them saying, just eat it, just eat it, just eat it. I blew up. I blew up. I don't know if it's because it was my family that I was able to do that, but I blew up and at that moment I said, just stop, just stop. If you love me, if you care about me, you will support me. If you want to eat it, go for it. You do you and I do me. But all I ask is that you respect my wishes and please stop asking me to try this and try that. And I was, I was not nice about it. Like I said, I was very blunt. I was very to the point. I didn't dance around anything. It was just boom, here it is, you know? And they looked at me and they didn't say a single thing. They didn't say a single thing. And to this day, I haven't heard anything. And sometimes you just have to tell them, like, I don't know if they, they don't hear the word no. I don't know if they think it's a joke. I have no idea, but I made it crystal clear that I wasn't messing around. I wasn't joking and I was 100% serious. You know what I mean? So as awesome as it is to get that support, at the end of the day, the way that I saw it was, I have to do this for myself. I have to do this for myself. I'm not going to do this for someone. So I'm not going to do this. So they stop this or that or anything like that. Once I was like, okay, I am serious about this. I am going to do this. And those who support me, th those that are around me that support me, you know, I, uh, I welcome, but if someone's going to try to lead you astray, consider the source and just completely, I mean, just completely block it out. And if it comes to the point where you have to tell them, this is what's going on and everything just be completely blunt, then absolutely go for it. Because once you have, like for me, once I had that mentality, I was able to just, it wasn't smooth sailing. <laughs> it's, it wasn't smooth sailing, but it was a little bit easier for me to move in that direction and continue on my path and continue on my weight loss journey without giving someone else that much power or that much credit over what I was doing. So you keep doing you, you keep those blinders on, you keep on that journey, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And if those people around you support you, then that makes it even better, you know what I'm saying? So I completely understand where you're coming from and just keep going. So fantastic question, hopefully I was able to help. Next question from F, I'm saving to buy my Holy Grail bag, the Chanel Jumbo Gold Hardware on the pre-love market, but I still don't meet the point where I can buy it. Anyway, the Chanel GST is on my wish list for a long time too. What do you suggest? Should I continue saving for the Jumbo or should I buy the GST now as it's discontinued? I'm a little bit afraid that the GST will be harder and harder to find, but the jumbo keeps increasing in price at the same time. Um, all right, so you're trying to decide between the jumbo and the GST, but the holy grail bag is the jumbo. All right, so we have a little bit more eye candy. I brought both of these bags out. So here is the Chanel GST in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. And here is the jumbo with the black caviar and the gold hardware. Uh, all right, so normally when it comes to holy grail bags, um, my recommendation is to always keep your eyes on the prize, especially if that's the one that you've been wanting to add to your collection for a long, long time. However, when you're talking about a discontinued piece that comes into play that you also want to add to your collection, uh, this is where I would suggest going for that one first. So in this case, it's the GST. And the reason I say the GST first is because just like you mentioned, it's getting a lot harder to find this guy, especially in good condition. Sometimes when you look on the pre-love market, you see some that have uh, quite a bit of sags on the side. So it's getting a lot more scarce. Uh, and I feel that with the jumbo, um, even though even though the the price increases do affect the increase on the pre-love market, I feel that with this one it's going to be a little bit easier to find just because it's still in production versus one that is already discontinued. You know what I mean? So that's what I would suggest. Like I said before, normally I would say keep those blinders on, keep going for that holy grail. But uh, if you want to add a discontinued piece and if that's the possibility for you to find one, then I'd highly recommend going for this one first and then going for the jumbo second just because um, it might be a little bit um, it might be a little bit easier to find on the pre-love market with this guy. So I don't know if that helps, but I wish you the best of luck and hopefully you're able to find exactly what it is that you're looking for. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to help. 
Next question from Shirley Go. Hopefully I said that correctly. Could you fit your car fob in the Chanel Mini O case and not feel bulky? And or would you prefer to use the key holder instead? Um, all right, so we have a little bit more eye candy and so we have a better visual. I brought out my two six ring key holders, the Chanel one and my Louis Vuitton one. And I also brought out the Chanel Mini uh, O pouch or the Beauty CC pouch and this guy as well, just in case you guys see it in the boutiques. Uh, and here is my key fob. Now with this key fob, I actually don't use it in either one of my six ring key holders. With my old key fob, I definitely used it the most in the Louis Vuitton one. And the reason that was is because between the two, I feel that this one's a little bit more generous. This one is a little bit uh, wider, whereas this one is very slender. And if I was to put my key fob in here, it'll make it very, very bulky. And I couldn't necessarily close it up even if I had keys inside. I know that's kind of, uh, <laughs> that's not the best visual, uh, but with the uh, Louis Vuitton one, it's a lot flatter, it's a little bit more generous, and I was able to fit six to eight um, keys in here plus the key fob, no problem. Sometimes it would end up sticking out, that doesn't bother me, uh, but still, I felt that I was able to close this up a lot easier than the six ring key holder from Chanel. Uh, but in general, when it comes to uh, to this key fob, I don't use either one, as I mentioned previously. I do like to put it inside of either my Louis Vuitton mini pochette or even this guy. And if I was to put it in here, even if I have other items inside, it definitely doesn't get too bulky. It's a little bit more slender. As you can see, there are no lumps and bumps or anything like that. So that's always uh, really helpful. Uh, so I really do recommend if you have this type of key fob or if you have something a little bit uh, a little bit thicker or even a little bit wider, um, going for something like this or going for the Chanel or the Louis Vuitton mini pochette, either one of those would work out nicely, even if you have other items that you want to carry inside. Uh, and again, I wanted to bring this one out just in case. I really like the size of this for um, for the key fobs, especially the, uh, the bulkier ones. So there it is. And I'm easily able to fit like a, a couple lip balms or a lipstick and a few other bits and bobs. You guys know, I like to, <laughs> I like to fit a little bit more in all these pouches. Uh, so I haven't had any issues, but as far as these types of fobs fitting in these types of key holders, if it's a little bit more slender, if it's not as bulky, um, you can definitely get away with using them. Um, but if you do have um, something that's a little bit wider than going for a bigger pouch is definitely the way that I would recommend or the thing that I would recommend. Uh, and also my old key fob, I had the key on there. This guy doesn't have anything. Um, so that's another reason why I don't necessarily use it on either of these two. So I don't know if that ends up helping you out, but it's all a matter of, um, you know, how wide your key fob is. And if you also have uh, the key attached to it, like the one that I had on my previous car. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Diana Marie. I have not owned a brand new Louis Vuitton, always getting pre-loves. I've been eyeing the Pochette Matisse and Emprunt for the longest time, but having too much hesitation from all the low quality issues and horror stories I'm hearing. It's quite a hefty price tag for me, but I still want to experience buying a brand new one from the boutique. I'm kind of scared that I'm gonna regret the purchase or if the experience will be worth it at all. This is an awesome question, and I know that there's been a lot of talk about quality control issue when it comes to Louis Vuitton, and I myself have added to that because of the past experiences that I've had, but there's also a lot of people out there that haven't had a single bad experience when it comes to Louis Vuitton, whether it's a handbag, a small other good, or anything like that. I've had so many people end up uh, sending me messages and they've said, you know what, I've been buying Louis Vuitton for 15, 20 years, I've never had an issue, never had an issue. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. So sometimes it is a case by case scenario. Sometimes it is a, a quality issue just because of the bulk that was produced during the time that they made that handbag, you know, kind of like the Pochette Matisse, or it could be another, or like the Emprunt Clays, you know, from a certain time that ended up melting or things like that. So, you know, I feel that even though it is, um, it's always great to hear the negative. It's always great to hear the quality issues of certain uh, of certain fashion houses that you're looking to add to your collection. Um, or even if you wanna go the brand new route, it's always nice to hear both sides of the story, right? But at the same time, I feel that by you going into the boutique and getting a brand new one, you never know how it's gonna work out for you. You might be one of the people that never has a single solitary issue with any of your items, and I truly hope that you do experience that. You know, and um, it is. A, I think it's a really wonderful experience when you go into the boutique. You try out the you try out the handbag and just the whole process, everything down to the packaging. You guys know how we feel about packaging, right? 
So I think that it's always, um, you know, it's always fun to be able to, to also go that route because you never know how it's going to work out for you. And uh, it might end up being a positive experience, you know, completely. And uh, another thing is that by going the brand new route, you also have the added bonus of the warranty. And I say the warranty because um, if anything happens to the item, if there's a wear and tear issue, or if it ends up being a recall or anything like that, you're in the system and it's a little bit easier I say that loosely. Uh, it's a little bit easier to go into the boutique and have something, um, you know, uh, be repaired or have something be looked at if you bought it brand new because they have you on file versus going um, the pre-loved route where you don't really have that, um, you don't really have that, uh, not security, you don't have that bonus, that warranty if anything happens to the piece. Unfortunately, everything is a case-by-case -case scenario. Nothing is black and white, nothing is across the board, but if it makes your heart sing to go for a brand new bag at the boutique, absolutely go for it because you never know, you might have one of the best experiences ever. So I wish you the best of luck and fantastic question and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from the Chiripaca. Hopefully I said that correctly. Do you spend much time on editing your videos? How many hours a week do you spend on planning, filming, and then editing? Any tips, special software that you can recommend? So curious how you organize this part of your life. Um, all right, so do I spend much time on editing my videos? Um, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. It can get really, really crazy, really, really fast. Uh, and as far as how many hours a week do I spend on planning, filming, and then editing? It all depends. It all depends on the week. It all depends on, um, on the video that I'm trying to film. Uh, before, reviews used to take a lot longer. Now I feel that Minx Monday ends up taking a little bit longer than it did before. Uh, but we're talking anywhere from six to eight to 10 hours, if not more. And um, it's not necessarily that I sit here for 10 hours or anything like that, but there's a lot of different factors. For example, sometimes I get really, really tongue-tied and I have to step away. Other times it's my camera. If, uh, if I'm having a hard time with my camera, if I'm burning through my batteries really, really fast, uh, then I have to wait to, uh, to charge them so that way I can continue to, to film. Other times it's the lighting. Other times it's YouTube because it can get really, really touchy. Um, one of the most frustrating things for me though is that after I've sat here you know, filming a video, it can be like maybe, I don't know, three to four hours for me to film one and then editing might take anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours then I have to upload it to YouTube and I will be like 98% done uploading the video I'm almost there I'm almost home free and then something happens with YouTube or either my computer is um isn't up to speed or whatever the case may be, it ends up booting it out and then I have to start all over again. That frustrates me till no end. So I have to step away from that or I mean anything like that. And I don't have any special software or anything like that. I just use a software that's on my laptop and as well as my computer. I use both of those. Uh, and you guys can definitely tell I don't have any special software because I do have rough cuts or rough edits throughout my videos. It's not as smooth as other, uh, as other people's, but that's okay. You know that's okay. But um, like I said before, it can get crazy and it can get very, very frustrating just because, you know, nothing's really working or, um, you know, nothing's lining up. But um, in the end, it is always, always worth it. You know what I mean? So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Fezcon. I recently went to Milan and I saw a guy with a Louis Vuitton monogram galaxy print key ball and pocket organizer. What do you think of this print? And would you consider buying anything in this canvas? I really like the print, but I don't know if it's just for guys. Uh, all right, so before we get any further, let me answer a couple pictures of the galaxy print right now. I absolutely love this print. I think it's so beautiful. It adds a nice little pop to the monogram canvas. I like anything space, really. So it's a little bit harder to find. And if it wasn't so hard to find, I would definitely take a look at possibly adding the pocket organizer in this collection. Um, I do want to add a pocket organizer and I go back and forth between this one and the monogram eclipse because that's another, um, that's another print that I really, really like. But I am a big, big fan of the Galaxy print. I think it is so incredibly beautiful. Now, as far as something being strictly for men, I personally don't see it that way uh, when it comes to Louis Vuitton or any fashion house. I know Louis Vuitton sees it that way. They have their men's section and they have their women's section, but I feel that all of the pieces that they have and all of the canvas prints that they um, that they offer, I think that they're unisex and it's all a matter of personal preference. If someone really likes, uh, like if a woman really likes something in the men's section or vice versa, if a man really, if a man really likes something in the women's section, um, you know, if they like it, then absolutely go for it and rock it like nobody's business. You know what I'm saying? So I say, if you like it, absolutely go for it. It is a beautiful, beautiful print and um, 
Yes, anything with space, <laughs> I'm a big, big fan. So fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from JBB65, what do you think of the new boy bag? It definitely would fit closer to the body for crossbody, but still unsure as I have not seen it or tried it on in person, have you? Before we get any further, let me insert a picture of the new boy bag right now. I also haven't seen this bag in person. I've only seen it online, and I'm really curious to see how it's gonna work out for people's lifestyles. I have to agree with you 100%. I think that it's a lot more user-friendly to use as a crossbody bag, just because the regular boy design, it's a little bit stiff, and sometimes it ends up protruding off of your body a little too much. So the fact that this one's a little bit more compact, this one's a little bit uh, a little bit less bulky, I think will really end up working in its favor. Um, and uh, personally, it's not for me. I don't know if it's necessarily just because it has that north-south design that I can't necessarily necessarily get past, but I do appreciate the fact that it has uh, the dual compartments. I really like the fact that it has a little bit more organization to it, um, but still, I'm really curious to see how this bag is going to do. Some people really like it, some people don't like it, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on the new boy bag. Do you think it's here to stay, or do you think that it is a little too trendy and it's just a passing... Um, it's just a passing design. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Uh, now for this week's lineup, I don't know if you're going to see me again just because uh, we have Edward's uh, doctor's visit and I get a little too tense and, you know, I'm hoping for the best. I'm praying for the best. Um, but you never know, so I'm leaving my week completely open, um, but I will definitely try my hardest if everything goes um, the way that I'm hoping for it to go. I will definitely try my hardest to film another video for you guys. If not um, Saturday, then I'll try for Friday. Uh, but just, you know, fingers crossed that it's going to be okay, but, um, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm like super nervous. Just talking about it makes me super, super nervous. So anyways, uh, but again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two or three times a week, and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.